Hello. Today in this section, we'll be walking through how to properly quantify Western Blot bands. For this segment, we'll be using a free analysis software from Lightcore called Image Studio Lite. Image Studio Lite can be used to analyze images from Odyssey Imaging Systems, as well as other imaging platforms and scan film. Many of the concepts we will walk through today are applicable to Image Studio software. If you're using another software platform to quantify your bands, some of these concepts will be applicable, but some may not. It's best to check with the software manufacturer on their own specific guidelines and tips for accurate, precise Western blotting analysis. So let's get started. Here we have a Western blot image obtained on an Odyssey imager. In this experiment, we serially diluted samples from C32 cells, ranging from five micrograms to 0 0.07 micrograms of protein. This is done in duplicate, as we can see on both sides of the block. In the center, we have a molecular weight standard. This image here is the Western blot signal from the 800 channel, which is detecting ERK in the samples. Now, to start our analysis, we'll first want to highlight each band with a shape to define the regions of interest. In Image Studio Light software, this can easily be done over in the analysis ribbon. In Image Studio Lite, we have the ability to draw or add various shapes to define the regions of interest we wish to quantify. These shapes include rectangle options, ellipse options, and then freehand options. For Western blotting, you'll find the rectangle option will work best for the analysis. In Image Studio Lite, you have two alternatives to adding these shapes. The first alternative is add rectangle. When you select this, all you simply need to do is go to your band of interest, hover over it, and click. Once you click, a rectangle shape will be added around your band of interest. To then add more boxes, you simply move to your next band of interest and click, and you just click each band, and a box will automatically be added around that band. Now, as you work through this in Image Studio Lite, you might notice the size of each of these rectangle shapes is changing from band to band. In Image Studio Lite, this is perfectly fine. When we correct for background, we will correct for the shape size as well, allowing us not to have a fixed shape size across all bands. This is ideal, as more often than not, band size is almost never the same. And adding the same sized shape in those scenarios almost always affects quantification accuracy. Keep in mind, Image Studio Lite allows for the shape size to change, but many other software platforms do not. So if you're not using Image Studio Lite, make sure to check the requirements of that specific software platform. Now, the second alternative is called Draw Rectangle. Draw Rectangle allows you to go ahead and go to your band of interest, and then click and drag to draw a box around your band. Additional rectangle shapes can be added by clicking and dragging subsequent boxes, coming into the analysis ribbon and then hitting copy and paste to add another shape. Or you can also add additional shapes of the same size in Image Studio Lite software by selecting one box and then coming here to add selection. And then when you click over your next band, a shape size will be copy and pasted there as well. Now you might notice as we're doing this, many of these rectangle shape sizes are not optimal for many of these bands. Now what we'll go ahead and do in a few moments here is optimize each of these shape sizes for each band. But before we do, we're gonna wanna go ahead and look at our background method. In Image Studio software, we can go ahead and look at the background methods over here in the background section. In this first drop down menu, we can see the different methods available to us. The first option here is none. This won't do any background correction, nor will it correct for shape size in the calculation. Our next two options right here are local background methods. These methods will sample background directly outside our region of interest. That assigned value will then be used to correct for background for that given shape. In this method, 
shape size is also corrected for. This is why we're allowed to adjust that shape size from band to band. Of the first two local background methods, average, this will go ahead and average the pixel intensities outside of our region of interest. The next method, median, will use the median pixel intensity outside our region of interest. The last option is user-defined. This allows you to draw a specific shape around what you determine to be the best representative background in the experiment. Once you've gone ahead and drawn a shape around this background, you can assign that shape as background by coming here and clicking the Assign Shape button. Once you assign that shape as background, the average pixel intensity contained within the shape will be used for all other drawn shapes. Ultimately, which method you decide will be based off of your experimental design and results. Generally speaking, it's, a, it's best to avoid the none method, as background is almost always present in a Western blot experiment. We'll want to subtract it out for accurate results in our analysis. Since we want to make sure we subtract out background, we're also going to find that Western blots almost never have uniform background across the entire experiment. Additionally, you might encounter experiments where the lysate or the sample itself is producing a background that is quite higher than where there is no sample or in comparison to adjacent planes. These common factors constrict the accuracy and reproducibility of the user-defined method. Considering these factors, the local background methods will be the best choice for starting out with your Western blot experiments. Of the two methods, average and median, the median method will be a good starting point. This will go ahead and use the median pixel value outside your region of interest and won't be influenced by outliers like non-specific bands or small background specs. Now, ultimately, which method you decide will be based off of your scientific judgment and to have a review of the rationale behind these methods, it will be best to review earlier lessons in the course. For my analysis, I'm going to go ahead and choose this background method. Now, once I go ahead and select it, I do have some additional parameters to define. These parameters that are now shown are an image due to light, and they're going to show up for both the average and median local background methods. Here, for the border width, we can select a value of one through five. This is the amount of pixels outside our shape of interest that we'll be sampling background from. The default setting in Image Studio Lite is three pixels, and this is a good starting point, but you may find you will need to adjust this depending on the results. Now, the segment will go ahead and dictate which edges of the shape we will sample outside of. In this analysis, I'm gonna go ahead and use the top and bottom segments to sample background. The top and bottom segments generally are a good starting point as it avoids sampling outside the left and right sides. We want to go ahead and avoid this because very often the left and right sides are where your adjacent bands sit in a Western blot experiment. This is also an ideal method for these experiments as the gels are run from top to bottom. By using the top and bottom segments for background uh, selection, we're effectively sampling background within that well, allowing for the most accurate background selection. Now, once you've determined you have an ideal background selected, hit save to save that method. Please note, if you determine later a different background method might be best, the method can always be updated later.